a lot of people having to do with uh, their children being involved with uh, Christian education and uh, so forth. I know the ins and the outs. Uh, I've been a parent uh, for a long, long time, and I've been faced with things. The Lord called me to preach uh, in the uh, 60s, when, uh, and the 60s, 70s were probably the toughest times in this century to raise kids. And uh, God called me, and uh, we went to Pontiac, Michigan, and uh, we were faced with uh, the expense of uh, me trying to go through Bible college, age 33, uh, three children, all kinds of responsibilities. And, um, I don't have time to tell you all the different uh, uh, snags that we ran into financially. Uh, we had been used to a lot of money, now we had no money. And um, we moved into a, uh, the ghetto of Pontiac, Michigan, and you have never in your life seen a ghetto until you see the one in Pontiac, Michigan. It's a ghetto of all ghettos. And we moved into the ghetto, and uh, we did the best we could. We, our kids was not always in the public, uh, in the uh, Christian school. But until uh, they would get kicked out because we were behind on the tuition, uh, they would be in the Christian school. And whenever the bill got so high and we couldn't pay it, well, then uh, uh, we didn't have any choice. And uh, my wife drove uh, uh, a van many uh, miles every day to earn tuition. She worked in the kitchen. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I worked extra hours, piano, uh, a music lessons. A lot of weeks. For the kids were, what we spent for uh, what lessons, for private. And uh, I have not uh, regretted a bit of it. The, the uh, time in the ghetto. Uh, even though our kids were exposed to all kinds of problems uh, there. And uh, uh, we had a 13-room house that had not been lived in for uh, a year and a half because nobody wanted to live in it. It was that bad. It had a coal furnace, and uh, the pipes weren't connected to uh, put the heat where it was supposed to be. It was coal, a coal furnace. And... Um, just all kinds of uh, uh, things involved with uh, that. Um, we did the very best we could to get our ki keep our kids in a Christian school as much as we could, and uh, God honored it. And uh, uh, our kids, all three, are musical. And uh, every time I hear Patty play, every time I hear Jenny play, every time I hear Kenny sing, 
every time I see him leading music, I think to myself, that's pavement right there. <clears throat> and uh, so you never know, you never know what the what few sacrifices that you make, what an impact it'll have on your life in, in later years and how, how much of a blessing uh, it will be. There's uh, <clears throat> no way that I can uh, cover the entire subject. I just wanted to give you the uh, purpose of education. Uh, this is an international uh, uh, definition of education. This is something that's applied everywhere in all the world. The purpose of education, whether it be Christian, religious, secular, or what method, uh, <clears throat> the uh, idea back of education is to blend the method, the philosophy, the facts uh, with the personality, with the will, with the intellect, with the feelings, with the ego, until they become a unity. That's the idea back of education. So <clears throat> if you uh, want a heathen child, put them in a heathen school. Don't put them in a Christian school, if that's what you want. If you want a world child, a child that's uh, streetwise, a, a child that's wise to all of the things of, of the world, don't fool around with Christian education. Keep them away from the Christian school because we'll confuse them. We really would confuse them. So if God's purpose is uh, <clears throat> added on the side, uh, and that's what it is, if, you, if your child is in a, in a situation where uh, the uh, curriculum does not uh, 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 infiltrate all the biblical principles, then you add Christianity on the side, especially if that, all they're exposed to is what you expose them to in the home and on Sunday morning, then uh, 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 Christianity becomes a side issue. God's purpose for education must be woven carefully with all instruction, whether uh, at home, at church, at school. Otherwise, there's a, uh, there's a confusion uh, of, uh, of purpose. The purpose of education in the early Christian church was stated in Acts chapter 2, verse 41 and 42, and it says, Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. They continued daily in these things. Monday through Friday? No. Monday through Monday. Every day they heard the same thing. Uh, they didn't hear it part of the time and then shipped off to hear... Uh, a conflicting thing every day they heard what w what was right uh, evangelism they heard education verse 41 verse 42 uh, verse 42 edification how to be a blessing to other people fellowship how to get along with others uh, for a person to have a Christian education the Word of God must be the uh, fountain of knowledge uh, all content of understanding, whether it be uh, reading, writing, math, science, history, social studies, uh, <clears throat> physical education, uh, fellowship, music, habits, all manner of life must be bathed and cleansed with the washing of the water by the word of God. Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that, all, that the uh, man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto, unto all good works. So a Christian school must integrate uh, what sin has disintegrated. So <clears throat> through uh, Christian education, hopefully, the child can gain back what they, would lo what they lose uh, through the contamination of the world. So this includes restoration of the personality to the image of God. And from that point, then the life is centered in God and lived uh, in the uh, center of God's will instead of uh, life being centered in my feelings and what I want to do, uh, <clears throat> what I feel like doing or not doing. So uh, it's important that everything that a child learns has the same sound, has the same quality of sound, that there's not the conflict 
Now, of course, in the process of education, they are taught how to think. It's not a brainwashing process where they are only taught to think in a particular way. They're shown the differences in the, this way of thought and the outcome of it, and that way of thought and the outcome of it. They're taught the differences instead of uh, just pointed, uh, one point of view without uh, uh, any, uh, uh, any uh, exposure to the other. Now, we don't have time to uh, verse by verse go through in the book of Exodus, but if you want to uh, study out what I'm going to give you in the next 15 minutes, it's in the book of Exodus, uh, starting the uh, first pa part of the book of Exodus. And uh, we, uh, I'll just go down through, and uh, later you can read these things. A lot of it you'll call, recall to memory, but uh, I'm not giving you anything that's not in the Word of God. And I'll show you chapter and verse if you want to know it later. Uh, but let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful for all that uh, has happened here today, and we pray that truly it's been a blessing and a challenge. And, uh, Lord, that we would get a vision of what you want to do with us and our children. And, uh, Lord, just bless now the rest of the service. Have your will and way in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. In the book of Exodus, it seems that Egypt is the uh, picture of the lost world. Pharaoh is a picture of the devil. Moses is somewhat a picture of the Holy Spirit. Always trying to uh, flee the pe uh, free the people of God from the powers of Satan. So this was Moses' thing to try. God called him to get the, uh, his people out of the world, so to speak, out of the uh, 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 thinking about things of God instead of thinking about the things of the world. After much problem, finally Pharaoh decided to let some of the adults go out uh, with a stipulation. He said, okay, Okay, Moses, because of these plagues that are coming on us, I'll concede. You can uh, take the adults out, but leave the kids behind. And uh, so in Exodus chapter 8, verse uh, 20, 28, the world thinks that a little bit of religion is okay, but just don't go too far with it. Don't go so far uh, with it that it will change the way that you live. It's okay to have religion, but don't let anybody know about it. Keep quiet about it. If you want to talk about it over there at your house and at your church and stuff like that, that's okay, but don't let anybody else know about it. Don't go so far uh, with it that um, it will keep you from being a slave to the world is really what the, the uh, devil wants. He, he wants you to uh, still be a slave to his system. Uh, he doesn't want to change, change the way that you look at the world and uh, the way that you look at, it, at eternity. When the plagues would come, <coughs> Pharaoh would make a, a, a pretense of doing right, but when the problem uh, passed, he returned to the same old way. I've seen that here over and over again over the years. Everyone believes the uh, church... In the church, the uh, in prayer, in Bible, in the Bible, uh, when terrible, awful things are happening, they believe in that. I've never been to a funeral that the people said, "I'm an atheist and I believe that when you're dead, you're dead." Never have heard that at a funeral. Uh, everybody, no matter how they lived, whenever it comes to a funeral, they they want to believe that there is a hope beyond the grave. But uh, while we're alive, uh, they want, uh, the world wants us to forget about that business and uh, rule that out, you know. When Pharaoh said, uh, finally Pharaoh said, okay, because of the plagues, okay, you older ones can go, go worship and serve your God, but leave your kids. It's all in the book of Exodus. Leave your kids behind. Hey, uh, the devil doesn't care about you old fogies all that much because he knows that you're going to be dead and there, there's going to be six foot of dirt in your face pretty soon. But what he wants is your kids. The devil wants your kids. And he will get your kids. If there's any way to get your kids, he will get your kids. Satan tolerates a few old fogies serving God as long as he can keep control of the kids. Then Pharaoh, uh, Moses said, no way, 
and more plagues came. And so Pharaoh said, okay, uh, <clears throat> all of you can go ahead and serve God. Take the kids too. Go ahead and serve God. Serve him the way that you want to, but leave all of your cattle and your belongings back here in Egypt. Right here. So the devil doesn't care how much uh, you uh, come to church and say glory to God and do this and that and the other as long as you don't support it. As long as you leave your money at home. Leave anything that's valuable at home. Don't bring that. Don't sacrifice anything. Leave all that behind. Leave your cattle behind. Leave your job behind. Leave, leave all that, uh, your valuables. Leave that at, uh, uh, at home. But you go ahead and serve God. Satan knows that if you don't pay, you won't pray. Uh, and you can put that down as a principle. If you don't pay, you won't pray. If you don't pay for missionaries, you won't pray for missionaries. If you don't pay for the church, you won't pray for the church. If you won't pay for your kids, you won't pray for your kids. If you don't pay, you won't pray. Uh, <clears throat> where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And Satan knows that. So whatever your treasure is, that's, that's where your heart is. Finally, the people of God got out of bondage. They were not slaves anymore. They were free to serve God. Now after 400 years of slavery and the ill treatment, uh, they have the blessings of God. They have the miracles of God. And what would you think if the people of God, with the blessings of God and with the miracles of God in their life, every Monday morning got up early in the morning and got those kids dressed and got the uh, cereal in them, and uh, got them ready to go, and they said, now you get on the bus and you go back down to Egypt because we're going to let Pharaoh educate you because it's free over in Egypt. We would have to pay if, uh, <clears throat> if we had a school where you could be taught the godly principles, we would have to pay. And uh, besides, we would have to... Uh, have all of this aggravation we wouldn't have the up-to-date equipment and all the things that Pharaoh has and after all he's uh, you're having to pay for Pharaoh's system anyway and so uh, <clears throat> you get on the bus and go down to Mr. Pharaoh's school and let him uh, teach you in Pharaoh's school there are, they are taught that prayer and the Bible is for weak spineless people simpletons they are taught that loyal to the family of God and country is ridiculous. They are taught that uh, <clears throat> um, whatever you want to do, do it. It's your body. Nobody has a right to tell you wh uh, what you can do with your mind and your body. But what does God say about that? He said, uh, you've been purchased with a great price. He, he says that uh, your body doesn't belong to you. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, God says uh, that we're to uh, keep our body in check. We're to possess our vessel. So if you want to have sex outside of marriage, whatever you want to do, just find someone else that will do it with you, and it's okay. Uh, it's okay to uh, have uh, to study witchcraft. It's okay to uh, uh, to be exposed with smut. It's okay to be exposed to homosexuality. It's okay to be in, in exposed to immorality. It's okay to uh, have an abortion without your parents' permission. Uh, it's okay. Everything is okay, but not the Bible, and not Jesus. And not anything to do with the with uh, eternal uh, with the uh, eternal matters. So if you want to read your Bible and pray, that's not okay. Um, so let, let, let's look at a few things that should keep us uh, help us to uh, see that there is no option 
as far as uh, Christian education for Christian children. There's no option. There's no choice in the matter. If, if you want to turn out Christian, a Christian child, Christian grandchild, there's no option. If you don't, send them to the heathen school. Send them on over there and uh, tell them, <coughs> apologize to your children every time you come to church because they'll hear things that are contrary to what they hear in public school. So be consistent and apologize to them. We're commanded to not learn the way of the heathen. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Now, how should that be interpreted? You, you suppose if uh, you were interpreting Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, how would you interpret it? It says, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Pretty plain to me. I don't know what I could add to that. I looked up the word heathen in Web Webster's Dictionary. I thought there might be a clue that I could get around it a little bit. And this is what it says. A heathen in the, in the dictionary, the uh, same dictionary that anybody else has, a people which does not acknowledge the God of the Bible. You say, well, we're not heathen in this country. This is a Christian... You, you've been sold a bill of goods, haven't you? I hear Christians all the time saying, the school here where our children go, I know it's a public school. I, I know what your argument is. I know it's a public school. But the, children, the, church where my, the school where my children go, it's a good public school. <laughs> oh, my goodness alive. That's like saying the devil is a pretty nice guy sometimes. And he has some really juicy, wonderful things for us at times. His what main way of life is, uh, is the way to go. Let me just spend a few minutes on uh, quoting from some textbooks that uh, the, the public government schools teach the kids day after day after day. Paul Vitz professor of uh, uh, <clears throat> psychology at the uh, New York University in New York City examined 90 widely used elementary textbooks. The purpose of his research, which was funded by the National Institute of Education, was to determine if public school textbooks were biased and why the conflict, with, especially with kids that were taught morals, why the conflicts that were involved? He needed to understand these children. And he found that uh, uh, these uh, books used in 70 to 87 percent of all classrooms in the United States, none of the books covering grades one through four contain one word referring to any religious activity in contemporary American life. Not one book in the first four grades having to do with anything having to do with uh, religious issues, biblical principles. Not one word refers to any child or adult who prayed or who went to church or temple. Uh, the same was true of 20 textbooks used by fifth and sixth graders. An occasional rare picture without caption in the uh, 60 books uh, does depict Jewish, Catholic, Amish, or a vague, or a vague non-denominationalist religious scenes. These few pictures that do uh, refer to re religious activities were distributed over 60 textbooks, roughly 15,000 pages. One, not one word or single image in any textbook shows any form of representative coverage for the uh, fundamental, fundamentalist by, uh, point of view in the Bible. It's common in these uh, books, says uh, Dr. Vitz, uh, to treat thanksgiving without explaining to whom the pilgrims gave thanks. 
One social studies book had uh, 30 pages on the pilgrims, including the first Thanksgiving, but not one single word or image refers to uh, religious or even part uh, of the uh, pilgrims' life. No part of the life of the pilgrims. Another textbook refers to the uh, pilgrims as people who make long journeys. That's what a pilgrim is. <laughs> a person who makes a long journey. However, in these textbooks there are frequent positive references to uh, Native American Indians, uh, religions such as the Pueblo can uh, pray to Mother Earth. That's acceptable. Pray to Mother Earth. Not one time are Christians mention praying to Jesus in the United States or anywhere else in the textbooks. Throughout the textbooks, the writers <clears throat> were not content to omit everything about Christianity, but they, uh, uh, they are liberal with anti-Christian, anti-Bible references. Christian missionaries, <clears throat> whenever mentioned, are uh, presented as uh, explosive, oppressive, antagonistic. Uh, Sunday school is depicted as a tedious bore. Ministers characterized as self-righteous, judgmental, and their photo, uh, photograph, uh, photographs of the church, churches, um, show churches that are obviously in states of decay and collapse. And denial of uh, biblical validity, denial of absolute values. No such thing as an absolute value in a, in a public school. It's all abstract. In the book uh, 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 Psychology for You, Oxford Press, uh, this statement is made. A great many myths uh, deal with the idea of rebirth. Jesus, uh, Diagesis, uh, Odin, and many other traditional figures are represented as having died, after which they were uh, reborn or rose from the dead. Uh, myths, and afterward they were uh, reborn or uh, rose from the dead. Myths, uh, myths may uh, give a picture of the world as having fallen from a perfect state. And the evil of the world, according to those traditions, I'm still quoting from the book, uh, <coughs> result from man's failure to obey the will of God, and it is only by following the will of God that the world can be restored to its proper state. And this essentially is the mytho myth mythological standpoint of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and many other religions, they say. So that would be a time for everybody to laugh. Jesus rose from the grave. Ha, 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 what a, what a joke that is. Yeah. In the textbook, uh, Perspectives in the United States History, uh, put out by field education publishers, this statement is made. The gods that man created uh, answered their special needs. The gods of Judeo-Christian uh, tradition was a god created by desert folk. They created. Did, didn't you know that? The children of Israel created God. They created him for their purpose. Former U.S. Secretary, uh, Secretary of Education Gary Bauer uh, has noted a tendency of American textbooks to be uh, uh, hypercritical of American institutions while glossing over the uh, character of totalitarianism. Uh, 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 governments. Uh, we have heard that communist is dead. It's dead everywhere except the United States. A few South American countries, but it's alive. It's alive here in America. Two things that Soviet people do, uh, this is what this uh, textbook says. Uh, uh, two things that the Soviet people do uh, not have to, uh, they do not have to pay for uh, education for their children, and they do not have to pay for medical care. Both are free throughout the country. Also, many workers are given free va vacations. They stay at special resorts paid for by the government. Uh, the text gives the uh, impression that the communist economic system is superior to the free enterprise. 
The text, uh, textbook shows how the Soviet Union has developed more in the last 25 years than the free world has in the last 100 years. Nothing is said about uh, ideas freely shared by the United States throughout the world and um, how that uh, many of our industrial secrets have been stolen by the Russians and, and the uh, Japanese. Nothing is said about that in any of the textbooks. Uh, in the textbook, The World Past to Present, um, D.C. Heath uh, Company says, Today, Siberia is a land of opportunity. Young Soviet workers go east, much as young Americans used to go west to make their fortunes. The Soviet government uh, encourages these young people to do so. It offers them better wages, longer holidays, and a life of adventure. Let's all move to Siberia. Students are encouraged to identify with the Communist Party by text questions like, uh, if you were a, civ a Soviet uh, citizen, to what degree would you reward, uh, would the rewards of the party work balance with the extra efforts of the party membership? These absolutely are no, uh, there absolutely is no moral conflicts involved in being a communist in the textbooks that our kids are taught all the time. No conflict at all. Human expression, <clears throat> a world history uh, text used in all American high schools uh, proclaims equality for women in the USSR uh, is and was a reality. Uh, <clears throat> they receive equal pay for equal work. It's only a dollar a year, but uh, you know, nah, I'm kidding, but uh, <clears throat> men and women are treated equally under Soviet law. They marry or they vote when they are 18. And you see, Soviets are uh, just like us, only they're, e they're uh, really better than us uh, because they're more equal than us. On and on it goes. When you see what our children are being taught, you can see why our nation is really in trouble, really in trouble. God said, learn not the way of the heathen. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30, warn, take heed to thyself, that thou be not uh, snared by following them, your enemies. After that, they, uh, uh, they be destroyed from uh, before you, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise, God says to you. You come along and you do the same thing that the heathen did, I'm going to treat you just like I treated the heathen. That's what God says. Then the chance of getting a good education in the government school is very slim. Right now the national average of education uh, of uh, 12th grade in uh, uh, school is actually about an eight and a half year grade in the public school. Even if they come out with a, a first-class diploma, without their real sharp student, and they do all the lessons whether the teacher uh, has anything to do with it or not, uh, <clears throat> most of them will not come out with a 12th uh, grade education. The average will come out with an eight and a half year grade education. In the ACE schools, even though there's a lot of kids that cannot do the 12th grade work, the average is a 12th grade education for ACE students because a lot of the students go beyond and they take a lot of college uh, courses when they're through with all of their uh, uh, daily work. Uh, sex with no morals, uh, <coughs> implications uh, is promoted, no knowledge of God in the Bible, me first philosophy of life, dope, bad language, no manners, uh, make it virtually impossible for the Christian with standards to uh, survive. So he must become part of the herd or they will be laughed clear out of the school. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a special story this, this evening that will show you why we could not exist another day until we had a Christian school and that's why we, we built a Christian school. Last, God tells us what we're to teach the children 
and when to teach it. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 through 13, tells us that as soon as they're weaned from the milk, start teaching them. Start teaching them what is right. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, tells us uh, what to teach. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, if we had the time, we could build a, uh, uh, two or three messages on the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, what God is saying there in that verse is make Christianity very tasteful to your children. Don't, it's the law, it's, you're going to do it and die. No, no, that's not the way. No, teach them uh, uh, this is the only way to live. There is no other way. Teach them that it's a tasteful thing to do right. And uh, that's what Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4 is, uh, is talking about. Uh, uh, not provoking. Fathers, provoke not your children wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I'll tell you this much. If you expose your children day after day after day after day after day to uh, things that are wrong, you are provoking your children to wrath. But if you will bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, here's the thought, and, and I, I, I close. I know I'm way past it. But the uh, old-fashioned mom, before Gerber's, <laughs> and this is going to gross you out, but you don't need to eat so much today anyway. Uh, uh, what, uh, what the moms used to do, before they had the food grinders, and uh, before they had Gerber's and all that, guess what? Mom chewed it up and said, here you are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know. And the mom never would chew up stuff that she thought that little guy would just spit out on the floor. She would put in its mouth something that was tasteful to her and say, it's really good. And that kid, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what we're to do with Christianity. That's what we're to do with the Bible. That's what we're to do with the way uh, of the Lord, the Lord's business, is to make it tasteful to those kids. Make it to where... They develop such a taste for it that they get foreign stuff in their mouth and go, yuck, I don't like it. That's what we as Christian parents are to do. We just stand. Father, we're thankful for this day, thankful for each one that's here, thankful for the patience of these folk and the extra time that they've spent today learning about these things. I pray that they would be back here this evening to learn uh, some additional things. Uh, Lord, speak to our hearts. We're thankful that um, uh, uh, one is going to get baptized. I pray if uh, there are others that ought to get baptized today that they would come. And uh, Lord, if uh, there are those that are not saved today, I pray that today, that's the most important thing in life, that they know where they're going to spend eternity. And Lord, if there's one here this morning that does not have that knowledge, that's, that's really why we're here. We're talking about Christian education but uh, if we don't know you, then all the education in the world goes right out the window. It's of no value whatsoever. We need to know you as our personal Lord and Savior. Lord, if there's one here that does not have this knowledge, that if they died today, they, would, they know they would go to heaven, I pray that they would come. Let us show them from the Word of God how they can know absolutely that they are saved, that their names are written down on the Lamb's Book of Life. So whatever the needs are here uh, today, have your will and way in our lives. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.